Welcome to Under the Radar Report. It's great to be back. It's so exciting because we're going to be talking all things nuclear with our nuclear expert, mining analyst extraordinaire, Peter Chilton. Thank you, Richard. Um, it's great to see you again, and it's great to be talking commodities because we're going to get right into three stocks in particular. But like, I think like nuclear really has been one area where I think you've excelled even your high expectations. Peter, when you you picked uh, Paladin back in early 2021 at 43 cents, went up well above $16. Now it's less than half that at over $6. Like, is this a buying opportunity, Peter? I think it is. The global nuclear industry is having a bit of a resurgence. It is a sort of fairly mature industry, but Immature. It, yes. it has been a fairly mature industry, oh. but but it has but is now going through a big resurgence because of the energy transition, and and the need for increased power with AI and so forth. So you're getting all sorts of countries in the in Europe now moving towards uh, nuclear, or committing to nuclear, and extensions of of the existing lives of nuclear power stations as well. And we're starting to see some increase in the uranium price. Well, the uranium price, spot price increased, then it fell back again. But the term price has remained pretty firm at around $80 a pound, right. which is a very attractive price for many of the producers. And you know, that's well above where, where the prices were you know, back in 2024. Okay, well, most definitely, yeah. So there's a lot of room for improvement. Yeah. But I mean, like this is one area where there is a lot of risk. We've seen that with the big, the big rise and decline of uranium stocks in particular, like even at the quality end, like does the repudiation in the recent Australian election, does that give you pause for thought? Well, I mean, the election is just a domestic thing. Yes. I mean, nuclear is global and yes. it's very much a global industry and the, it's pretty much in every continent, probably except Australia. Yeah. So, and, and why is that? Uh, I mean, it provides proven baseload power. And once you've established it, it's very cheap. Once you've paid for the project, yeah. it's very cheap power as well. And it's absolutely reliable. And we're starting to see more and more uh, more and more interest at, uh, either across Europe and in the US. Are we? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Well, that's fascinating because I guess when it, comes to nuclear, as I said, you want to be limiting your exposure, but you want to be buying quality in terms of the percentage of your portfolio. And that these stocks can really make a huge difference. Mm. One that I just mentioned before is a flag bearer on the ASX. Let's talk about Paladin, Paladin Energy PDN. Mm. Why is that such a quality uranium producer in your, mm. in your view? I mean, Paladin is basically a reopening of an existing successful project. So, so brownfields. It's, this brownfields are products already already well known by the utilities. Yep. is now ramping up to uh, quite a large production rate of six million pounds a year. In, so in, 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 in their, their projects in, in, right. in their their projects in Namibia, which is a proven uranium jurisdiction, mm. and they've also just bought into a new project in Canada, again in a in a known uranium jurisdiction. So. With this new project, I mean, that would propel them into sort of well over what, 12 million tonnes a year, which is uh, so pound, put, pounds a year. Let's put that in, yeah, 12 million pounds a year. <laughs> That's right. We're not, we're not going to be, we're not going to be blow, Palin's not going to be blowing up the world. It's going to be, no. it's going to be um, putting a fire under its share price mm. if, it, if it generates that kind of production growth. But where does it fit in? Like Cameco's the biggest listed producer. How big are they? Well, Cameco is probably about. 30 million tons of pounds, pounds a year. 30 million yeah, pounds a year. But Cameco is a bit exceptional, and it's also got a number of joint ventures as yeah. well. Whereas, would Paladin be bigger than most of the others? or It's sort of up there. I mean, yeah. there, there, there will be some of the future ones might be bigger. Yeah. But it's certainly of a scale that's attractive to investors. Okay, let's move on then, because... You know, Paladin is obviously quality. One that also has growth potential that you like is Boss Energy. Mm -hmm. Tell us about Boss Energy, please. Well, the beauty of Boss for many investors is it's in Australia. Well, uh, and so that's when you go on your honeymoon. So that, so that sort of 
reduces some of the risk for you know in some investors minds and it's Australia. it's other strain it's also a reopening a reopened mine which has had a proven track record and it's honeymoon um, it's honey, hun- called honeymoon. Yeah, yeah honeymoon well and yeah. so how big is that compared to paladin that, you know that's about half ramping the, up roughly half the size half r- the size roughly half the size okay and, the, and both has already got a a project in in a joint venture in texas as well and i suppose the fact they've got some US, spo- U.S. exposure is potentially positive for the longer term because, one, the U.S. Is a, wants to build its nuclear power capacity, expand it. And, you know, it, there's all sorts of opportunities that may emerge for BOSS in the States in joint ventures or so forth uh, in the future once you're there. So would you prefer Paladin or BOSS? I'd probably prefer Paladin because Even it's the they, larger. They did have those mm. issues though, didn't they? Oh, they were just, the, the, the they, flooding. They were just, I mean, flooding's an act of God, you know. Yeah, it's well, not, it seems to happen a lot these but, days. But, so. um, you know, I, th- th- I think even though they had that flooding, and they seem to recover from it quite quickly. Right, so their mines has been dewatered. So they, and you're saying their boss don't have that, even though they don't have those problems, they're, they're slightly not quite as good value or what's i mean paladin's ramping up fairly quickly right whereas boss is ramping up over three years right okay so that's probably a bit of a difference that is yeah. a difference yeah and let's move on to a stock that's outside of uh, you know pure uranium production silex systems that's a fascinating company can you tell people a bit about silex systems? i mean basically it's got two prongs really the first prong is that it's got this technology which is a an enrichment technology. I mean, when you produce uranium from a mine, it then has to be enriched to produce a fuel, yeah. which can be used in the power stations. And then that fuel can be of certain types, but there's the high-grade fuel that can be used in the new technologies, including the small modular reactors. Right. So it's very important that when you're enriching uranium, you've got the capability to go to the higher quality. Now, the technology which Sykes has got, and it's a joint venture with Cambico. With the big Canadian group. With the big Canadian group, which is obviously provides greater comfort, is that this new technology not only is expected to be more efficient and lower cost than the existing technologies, but can also produce those other alternatives of the high-grade enriched uranium. And what so part does the U.S. government have to play? In well, the U.S. government, obviously, with, for the fact that it wants to become self-sufficient in, in rich uranium, especially with breaking away from Russian supply. They're, they're it, like 70% of the market. Yeah, yeah, they are. So, Silex is one of actually six companies okay. tendering right. or, or providing their technology with the view that the U.S. will establish several not just one, but several enrichment facilities. enrichment facilities to avoid uh, ex- importing it anymore. And in terms of their financials, how, how long can they last without mm. raising money? Or yeah. what, well, what will happen, we, they, they've got sufficient cash at the moment. Oh, plus, they do. But right. Plus the backing of, of Cameco in, in that joint venture. But once they reach certain milestones, they're going to get funding from the U.S. government. To, oh, okay. to so there's government funding available. In fact, there's about, I think it's US 3.4 so billion among six different companies. Wow, that's, that's pretty that's, big. So would you put them as higher risk than the other two? Uh, it's, 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 would you, it's, would it's, you put that higher risk? It's higher risk in the sense that there's absolutely no certainty that that will be the technology that will be adopted. But you think... Is we, we, because it, it's, it's, it's a bit of risk. The other thing about this talk, about, about the company, I said it was two prongs, is that they then would go into production. There's some tailings which would then be reprocessing. So Silex ultimately would become a producer of uranium and other different enriched grades, and not only would have that direct interest in that uh, enriched uranium, but also got royalties on the use of that technology globally. So well, longer term, I would say that's a low, a low capital kind of like big returning kind of business. Yeah, once, yeah. once it gets going, once it gets going, yeah. So Peter's done a great report on nuclear and uranium. That I, I think, if you're interested in getting into more depth, you've got to read that at this recent report in last week's issue. 
as well, if you want to get into the stock specifics, head to our website. We cover like six or seven uranium uh, nuclear stocks. They're all worth checking out. And he's also done a, a recent report on gas. So we're going to continue this commodity series and talk about other niche areas that you won't hear about anywhere else. What we've also got coming up this week is very exciting in our 650th issue in small caps. We've got a, a new stock. We've got a new stock that we're very excited about. And we've also got a portfolio management series. Like our portfolio manager has really outperformed the market over a long period. And that is only accelerating, you know, with the market eruptions that we've seen because we, we do have very consistent performance in our small cap fund. So it was great being a part of Commodities Corner once again with Peter Chilton. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Thanks, Richard.